Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Prof. As you can see, uh, we're uh, attempting to do something a little bit different this time around. Uh, I have uh, Dr. Luke Bucci with me uh, from First Endurance. And the reason that I'm bringing him on today is, uh, as you all know, I've been partnered with First Endurance for a number of years now, really since uh, officially since 2016, unofficially even a little bit before that, I was doing some writing and research for them uh, in the past as well. So uh, when I was still working at the university. Um, and if you go back and look through uh, my previous videos, especially the Ask the Prof ones, I've done a number of reviews on uh, the new product launches, the new EFS, the new EFS Pro, um, and I was had I've had a number of questions about the new product called Halo. And as I was doing my research, I was looking at the publications and the, the published studies as I normally do. And I kept seeing the same name over and over and over again. Uh, and um, I know that guy. And so instead of me trying to decipher uh, that research, I thought I would ask him to come on and talk a little bit about uh, the new product and uh, how everything went. Now, I will say that this is our attempt number two. Our first one, uh, Dr. Bucci and I got a little bit carried away and we went way uh, to the uh, in-depth side of things. Um, and so I'm going to link that below. And so if you want to, after finishing this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button and then click on the other link that I'll leave below here and you can keep on uh, learning more and more about this product but uh, we'll get we'll uh, give this another go around and uh, go from there so Dr. Bucci why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be a part of First Endurance. All right well thank you Matt for this interview I, I'm, I'm going to have a blast and I hope everybody else does too but my background is um, kind of weird. My dad was a pathologist, so I, I grew up seeing dead people, and I wanted to know what made people tick and why things went wrong. So I went through school and everything, got a PhD in biomedical sciences, which is mostly cell biology and biochemistry, our, our inner workings, uh, from University of Texas at Houston Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences and did a double postdoc there, then went straight into the dietary supplement industry, where I've happily been for the last 36 plus years. And in the meantime, I published a couple of books on sports nutrition in the 90s on ergogenic aids. And the first one that specifically focused on your musculoskeletal system and joints and injuries. And that was 1994 and a couple of public books about glucosamine and chondroitin. So in my career, I've uh, uh, developed glucosamine and chondroitin combination, which is a commodity now for joints and introduced krill oil to the mass market to make it work in the real world. And that got me started thinking about um, a lot of other things, including what we're gonna talk about today. But uh, in the meantime, in, in between, I've uh, been a member of two clinical nutritionist groups, as well as the American Society of Nutrition. So um, I guess you can say I'm a, a nutritionist that's a scientist to begin with. So, so that's we, kind of where that's the background. But uh, Mike Fogarty called me up in 2019 and said, hey, would you like to head up our R&D? And I thought, Oh boy, I get to go back to sports nutrition. Yes, sign me up. So I was thrilled to get back into this because I had always kept an eye on sports nutrition and have seen a, a explosion, a mountainous explosion of research. And I really wanted to get back into it. So this is like a dream come true for me. So uh, I get to join a company that, that is science-based. So as a scientist, that's great. But the marketing side is there to inform, educate, and communicate how these products work, what, how they're good for you. And one thing I really liked is that, uh, as you know, that these products are actually tested in real life settings and situations and conditions, uh, because you can't trust all of the uh, peer reviewed literature because some of it's a little artificial and doesn't quite match what everybody's doing in the real world. And that got me intrigued because um, I've seen the results. Yeah, very much so. Uh, that's been one of the fun things about being part of First Endurance is I am a, 
uh, a first line guinea pig. Uh, and I get to test out a lot of the new products and say, you know, uh, and then come circle around and have conversations with you and Mike and say, okay, well, this is what the research is saying that you should be experiencing. And, you know, is that matching with what you actually are feeling and, and experiencing yourself? And again, that's why uh, I've happily uh, been a long-term partner with First Endurance because they do put science first, but they also realize that we need to have real world application in that. And if I understand the story correctly, when Mike called you, one of the uh, conditions of you coming on board was being able to bring this product called Halo to market. And, and that was something that's kind of been your baby. And, and when I referenced our previous conversation, if you guys go in and watch that other one, you'll see exactly what, what I mean by how excited uh, Dr. Bucci can get when, uh, when he starts talking about uh, some of the research behind and, and the things that he's done with this. Um, but so why don't, uh, in a nutshell, you explain what Halo is? Uh, real quickly, Halo is a patent pending but precise combination of curcumin with uh, an omega-3 oil called Superba-2, which is uh, from krill, and it contains astaxanthin. And that is, is a, a combination that should do everything that both of these nutrients are supposed to do in the forms that get them into the body. So again, that's been a 10 year gestation period and five publications on how to get curcumin into the body. And I, I think I finally put it together this time. Very good. So, I mean, we got three parts here to break down. So the first one is what is krill and why is that important for the body? Krill oil is half triglycerides like fish oil, but the other half is phospholipids with omega-3s and they are just like what's in your cell membranes. And in fact, the uh, phospholipid omega-3s in your cell membrane are what make your anti-inflammatory signals, the eicosanoids and such, to keep it sort of simple, that, that gives you healing, repair, uh, anti-inflammatory effects. The problem with omega-3s is they're a little susceptible to oxidation. So the astaxanthin in the krill oil keeps them fresh before you get them. And being a phospholipid, they're soluble in water and fat, and they go with your fat straight to cells, which the fat is inside the cell membrane. So they, they just simply just um, get transported. They don't even need digestion or getting torn up and put back together like fish oils do, which is why a low dose works quite well. Okay, so then step two is what is curcumin? <laughs> Curcumin is one of those wonder things that it hasn't been wonderful. It's a, again, it's a very unusual polyphenol like every plant has, and it's very active. And you throw it into test tubes or animal studies and it works wonders. I, I can't even get into everything it does, but it was highly touted as doing all these things. And you can still see many websites that extol these virtues that are based on test tube and animal studies. Unfortunately, us humans have evolved to not get it in. It is so potent. It says, nope, you're not gonna take control of me. I get to say what's going on in my body. So it, um, number one, it will, anything that tries to get in gets modified and thrown out. Also, curcumin is not very stable. It's such a, an unusual shape that it's a very taut molecule and that makes it a wonderful antioxidant. So the uh, thing about halo is that combining the curcumin, which is this ready to explode kind of compound, that's a great antioxidant. It protects the omega-3s in the krill and then the krill protects the curcumin from your body. And guess where they end up? Your cell membranes. Everything else that's given curcumin except for how Asian Indian food is cooked, which is in oil with turmeric and curry, that gets the curcumin in and anything else tries to make curcumin water soluble, which is like, like a square peg in a round hole. So we get the right things to the right place in the body in the right amount. So this has been tried before. Curcumin is not a new concept, but what's essentially new and 
uh, uh, the patent pending portion of it is the delivery system, the ability to actually get it into the cell to increase the bioavailability so it can be useful. Is that correct? Yes, it's really all about your cell membranes. And that's what we do is get curcumin where it belongs in the cell membranes to have its effects. It protects the omega-3s in your cell membrane and also sends its own signals to accentuate what the omega-3s do not what the other counteractive system from omega-6s do. I'll leave that one where it is, but uh, it emphasizes the, the powerful healing restorative and what are called now resolving features that are a normal part of uh, your stress response. And that includes inflammation from over-exercise and anything else as a matter of fact, so that when you over-exercise, over-train or, or just work out hard, you get sore. Well, that's because of some free radicals and that triggers inflammation and that triggers the omega-6 uh, side to put out this, these eicosanoid signals to help um, start the inflammation going so your body can make sure there's nothing bad going on. And then your omega-3s come into play and reverse that inflammation and start the healing process. That's kind of the simplest way to get it all in a nutshell for you. Very good. So if it, it, it always, it always kind of throws up a red flag when you start seeing one substance or one situation that has so many uh, purported benefits or so many possibilities, you know, it kind of reminds you of all the different uh, things that like CBD can claim to do. And, you know, I've definitely used CBD in the past and appreciated some of the things that it has, but it, it has a laundry list of things that it, you know, is supposed to be able to help with as does Halo. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about that and what, you know, maybe the differences or similarities might be there. Uh, mostly differences. I, I think that the curcumin done right is what CBD is wanting to be and supposed to be. Uh, I, I have not seen CBD work in, in my hands. I'm not, um, the literature is a garbled mess. It's not ready for prime time yet. It's only part of the whole story with that, that cannabis plant. Curcumin has its big problem of getting into your cell membranes. And that's a nut that hasn't been fully cracked. Now, that's not to say that all the studies on curcumin are garbage. Uh, a lot of the human ones are highly successful and some aren't. And you can spot those real quickly because ones that aren't successful used the form that would not get in much at all. Therefore, if it's not going to get in, it's not going to work. Uh, other, study, other studies use these enhanced absorption things you find everywhere now. There, there's almost over 100 now. I've lost track. And all they do is get it in and out quickly. And in the meantime, it helps a little. So some studies do show positive results. So we know what curcumin can do if you give it a chance. And in Halo, combining it with krill oil and the phospholipids, it just targets right where it needs to be at the right time. So you've had a few trials with it. Like talk, talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the challenges that you had to get it so where it could actually be delivered to the cell. Ah, gosh, it, it, I can't divulge too much because of the patent, but um, uh, this is something I've been working on for over a dozen years now. And it finally just clicked when I made a, a small, let's just say a small change in the normal way to make um, make these kinds of products. And it turned out that that was the key or, or secret, if you will, to getting curcumin into the cell membranes. Um, it, it was not a hundred percent conversion from what you swallow. It's still a small percent, but that small percent is really huge in our tiny amount of cell membranes in our body. It's like a, you know, like a thimble full of cell membranes in your entire body. And that's where all the action is. So you also don't want too much curcumin either. And you also want it in the right places. So everything kind of clicked and started giving it to people and trying it out. And golly, I, I really can't say some of the things it's done has just been um, unbelievable. So uh, for these folks, we stopped. Whatever it was they had came back, gave it again, went away. So when you do the um, elimination provocation, that, that's the oldest trick in the book to show something works. 
Yeah, I mean, definitely when this first came out was right around the, or when the prototype first came out was right around the time that I was dealing with some of the uh, knee issues. And obviously there was a, a much greater uh, mechanical issue going on that did require surgery, but um, just in the inflammation process and everything like that, this was one of the first supplements that I could actually tell when I went a day or two without taking. And, you know, just like you mentioned, the, the elimination process, you know, it, it's so often that you don't, you can't tell if a supplement's working, you kind of have to trust some of the science behind it. And this is one that, uh, it, you know, it, it, it really made a difference um, early on. So it, if, if I could ask you to, you know, summarize in, in just a couple sentences, why an endurance athlete should take Halo, what would it be? Here's your sound bite. What, what Halo does for the endurance athlete is it allows you to recover faster. If you happen to have minor nagging injuries, it allows you to heal and repair those faster. So you get back to training quicker. And uh, it may have some performance effects too. Uh, there's, there's studies in omega-3s and curcumin about that, but uh, I'm not going there yet because we want you to feel better. You want, you want your body to structurally be better so you can exercise to your maximum. So it kind of unlocks your maximum potential. Very good. I've always said that so many nutrition companies out there are marketing companies that sell a product and not something that... Uh, is really trying to develop new groundbreaking um, nutrition supplements or things like that. Uh, where are you in the patent process? Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we're we're in that initial stage where the U.S. Patent Office is looking at it, and it takes them a while to get back, and then we go back and forth. And it isn't my first uh, patent attempt. I've had several and uh, just lately reinvented the multi, so to speak, and that just got patented as well. It took five years. <laughs> so we, it's going to be a long slog, slog, slug fest, and um, it's going to be real interesting what they, they say. But so far, uh, I have not seen this, this actual formula out yet anywhere, which is the unique part. The unexpected part is that it works better than expected. Very good. Well, we'll definitely uh, have to have you on again once the patent is issued. So uh, we can talk about what we can't talk about right now uh, as we uh, wait for that process. Uh, but I really appreciate you uh, taking the time on a, on a Friday afternoon uh, to come and talk with me a little bit. This will probably go out uh, on Saturday morning for most people. Um, and so yeah, like I said, um, I will have the kind of the extended version available to all of you as well. Uh, so you can get a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the science and, and uh, nerd out a little bit more with us. Uh, it was a, definitely a fun conversation, but uh, we, we went through it and reviewed it and thought that this might be uh, better served to have kind of more of an introductory conversation first to talk a little bit about what is Halo and answer that question first before kind of going into that deeper dive. So that will be linked below. Again, thanks for uh, tuning in. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.